Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and as I did mention, the Deadeye Ascendancy is probably the other one I am most excited for and wanted to try out the most, and I definitely wanted to put my second starter character to the test in the form of the Deadeye Ice Shot Barrage um, Death's Opus sort of fizz cold character, and so far so good. We've only hit something like level 80, still got a bunch of gear to upgrade, but holy shit, Deadeye does basically receive everything or exactly what I've always wanted out of it. So Deadeye has never really been bad, it never has been a terrible ascendancy, there just hasn't been much point in going it because it gives you some damage similar to that of a raider or a pathfinder and yet you are so much slower. At this stage though Deadeye still has all of that the damage that it previously did and previously gave you except now it is competitive on the speed scale with the tailwind and the reduced cooldown of Blink Arrow, and it really does suit the uh, bow or ranged playstyle incredibly well uh, just because of those buffs, and especially the Blink Arrow reduction. If you really want, and if you do really apply your Blink Arrows, you can just keep warping all over the place basically on cooldown. It feels really good to play, and so far it's just been an absolute dream to level and uh, map with. I currently have almost no resist though, so you may notice that I get completely chunked by things in a breach, for example, like this one, but that will be fixed up just a little bit later when I can be bothered for the gear. The character that I'm trying to play is the Deadeye Starter Ice Shot, and Ice Shot doesn't really matter in a build like this, or in most Ranger builds. You kind of pick between Ice Shot, Tornado Shot, Lightning Arrow. Uh, they're all going to be really nice clear skills but I do like the synergy of having a more of a fully cold setup and cold aesthetic especially now with the Sin Herald device that I currently have on my uh, Herald device micro. So overall it feels really good and it looks really good and I think it should end up being a strong character uh, just if you invest more and more it's going to get better and better unlike the champion which I think is a uh, much stronger investment or character to invest in right off of the uh, early game and then it has probably a higher ceiling whereas this one will cap out just a little bit lower but it should still be able to do everything in the end game and uh, it's something I will try and get through and uh, figure out without putting too much currency in but currently the gear out there isn't too expensive a death's opus itself uh, just to start out with or potentially use for the end game not too sure yet uh, is very good very strong choice and then of course a chin soul if you really want the big single target doesn't even cost anything it's just the utility stuff on top of that that may start running you a bit higher if you actually want to get as much scaling as you possibly can out of it with things like a Dying Sun, a Six Link, and a really, really good jewelry. But the sheer amount of accuracy that Deadeye provides means you don't need that much um, accuracy or basically any throughout your gear, so the jewelry can be a lot more flexible. And I do feel like it's going to scale the best, uh, this Ascendancy, with the least amount of gear simply because of the accuracy the attack speed it all provides and the additional arrow uh, that you get from Endless Munitions too. Overall, I do think Deadeye is just absolutely fantastic right now and something worth playing for a lot of different ranged characters. So it is ultimately still very similar to the uh, Raider Ice Shot Barrage character I made quite a while ago, and that video is more or less completely relevant, but I will still go over this because there was probably going to be a few little differences and, of course, talk a bit about the Deadeye. But first of all, I'll take care of the most important thing, the aesthetic of the build. So over here we have a uh, nice little setup that's kind of dark and gloomy but without any of the gloom stuff because now we have a sin body armor, a sin boot and a sin character effect and that's where all this uh, nice clean aesthetic is coming from paired with a celestial hood and a subjugator cloak. So this is the supporter pack cloak, pretty damn expensive and it doesn't have to be um, fit into this sort of thing. Can use plenty of the other mystery box stuff uh, something like these wings look really nice too, but currently I'm just trying to get a certain theme happening. Just a nice little cloak works too if um, you've got stuff like that available. Just sort of a darker kind of themed character I've been really enjoying uh, with these current micros. And then of course Ivory Arc of Courage, Celestial Weapon Effect, a couple of shitty swords floating about, and that takes care of that. So as always, Pretty much the bow that I've been just absolutely onto ever since it came out is Death's Opus because it's got really nice crit, 
two additional arrows and a bunch of crit mold here. You just cannot go wrong. And I absolutely love this bow. Uh, I may still try and craft something else or play around with some other bows too. But for just pure niceness, I think uh, the Death's Opus cannot really be beat with a chin sole in the offhand if you want the maximum single target. And currently I'm also pairing it with a uh, shaped quiver. So if you get a eye level 80 or higher um, shaped quiver and then just get some alteration spam happening, you'll get bow attacks, fire additional arrow at some point, which um, you know can be decent, but pair it with some sort of not completely terrible suffix. And then um, if you can uh, multi-mod, that's fine. If you can't, just get a bit of a life roll on it. And that should be better than most other quivers out there in the game at the moment. Now, the rest is pretty straightforward, I think. I am still going Tomb Fists uh, with two sockets. They're something like 40 Chaos and should be better than a regular pair of gloves, no matter what kind of crap jewels you can get. Because uh, just Tomb Fists with two sockets and just like 50 life on each jewel, that's going to be better than a regular pair of gloves already. So I tried to get a bit of life, multi, cold damage, uh, life, cold damage, something like that. Pretty simple stuff because Abyssal Jewels are much harder to get. Uh, especially at this stage of the league uh, in this new league. So I do think they're the best things to use though, Tomb Fist for the Intimidate. And I've gone back to my roots with a bit of a Rat's Nest in a 4k life build uh, because I just wanted a little bit more movement speed and a bit more crit as well. And I feel like with the large amount of evasion that the uh, Tailwind and Deadeye is going to provide, I can afford to lose just a little bit of life uh, in favor of some um, quality of life. And in this case, that being uh, movement speed and reduced character size effect because it does make you look really teeny and really cute. So that's kind of the point there. But otherwise, Star Conjure is great. Just a regular life um, rare helmet is fine too with a bunch of evasion. Uh, because we do have lots of evasion in this character. You can absolutely stack a lot of evasion. And I was really, really tempted to do that with, let's say, a perfect form. Would have been completely lovely because um, instead of a belly, you get a perfect form. Uh, you run Arctic Armor, you get Phase Acro. Overall, I think it's probably the best choice, but I just um, wanted to run the Rat's Nest, and that means I needed to get life uh, in other places a lot more like the Belly of the Beast. I still definitely need to change this ring. It's something I picked up at level 10 just to uh, get a bit of int. Got to change these boots because they're pretty crap. Not going to run the Meganords anymore. Need a belt with some uh, elemental damage to attacks, for example. And currently running a steel ring that I crafted just to have a little bit of um, multi and life. And then um, the only other thing is I should mention that instead of um, opals, I'm going steels this time around. And that's mostly because um, I'm trying to get a bit more physical range happening on the barrage. But I don't think it really matters. Ultimately, you're probably going to be better off with opal rings. But I think steels are a bit more fun to craft and uh, probably a bit more versatile in the end. Now, the links for the character at the moment kind of haven't got anything concrete yet. But the only thing to really update at the moment is Mirage Archer support. So you get it at level 4 and it is pretty crazy. And it's definitely something you want in your setup. Uh, for your ice shot because you see it throughout the clips it does do quite a lot of help helping me clear so the setup i'm going with is ice shot elemental damage attacks gmp you then put chain in whenever you're ready to have the damage for chain now for me that was pretty early because i've been running uh, leveling uniques and feeling really good and mirage archer support so the mirage archer will mirror your attacks and give you um quite a bit of additional clear speed because it mostly covers a lot of the stragglers out there and like I said, chain, that's just something that's going to happen when you actually have the damage. Until you don't, uh, until you have that damage, run Omen of the Winds. Just one of them is fine, so that your ice shot will pierce. And then for my barrage currently I'm running, and this is very provisional, barrage, mirage arrow, hypothermia, added cold, early damage with attacks, and crit strikes. I'll probably get rid of crit strikes pretty soon. I may slip ice bite in there and start picking up some frenzies. But since I'm not a raider, I will need a single target frenzy just to um, keep up my frenzy stacks on bosses. So you just have a frenzy attached to your left click or somewhere and uh, just stack up frenzies real quick on uh, a boss fight before you go in because you will need that for ice bite. You will need that for damage as well. But that's pretty much all there is to say. Uh, wise Oak as well for a bit of the cold resist penetration. But it's not that important since you do have... Uh, uh, lots of cold pan throughout the tree as well as frost bomb. So what else we're looking at is the dead eye ascendancy. To start out with I went uh, tailwind so gathering winds as my first two points because uh, I wanted to start 
feeling the evasion, feeling the tailwind effect. And uh, overall, that evasion just at the very early game is going to help you a lot. So I do recommend that as the first two points. My next two points, I went with fast and deadly because I wanted to start blinking around a lot more. Uh, 15 attack speed is really nice early on and it just completely covers all of your accuracy needs. After that we got far shot and of course that doesn't really synergize too well with point blank. Uh, basically I'm pretty sure that just means that point blank will override far shot most of the time but it means that when you're further away your far shot is going to still uh, help you out so that point blank doesn't suck as much from a distance but overall they kind of cancel each other out and for the most part you do want point blank uh, for the end game but I haven't been running point blank and I won't be doing that up until about tier 16 maps when I really need the actual single target for now no point blank and just making use of my far shot now my last two points I'm personally going endless munitions because I value the um, single target that this is going to provide for the additional projectile the area for the ice shot should actually still be pretty nice for the clear as well as well as for the herald of ice so i think sin herald of ice effect is going to look pretty comical with endless munitions as well and i can't wait to get it however there is no wrong choice you can grab the last two points for pierce over here and go completely piercing instead and have a uh, better crit strikes you can grab chain over here and completely lose the chain support in your ice shot which i personally don't really think is worth it because I don't mind running chain on my ice shot and it clears perfectly fine so you're not really gaining much there except for uh, clear damage which I don't think we need so the idea is to focus more on a single target because that's what's going to matter in the end but you could also take rupture because uh, in the end game of your character when you're finalizing the finishing touches rupture is going to be pretty close to an additional projectile in damage thanks to that crit and crit multi and because uh Basically, we do have a lot of arrows already. There's two additional there. There's one additional there. Uh, if you get another additional there, that's four additional arrows on your barrage already. If you have a barrage helm enchant, that's another five, uh, fifth. If you have a dying sun, that's seven. All of a sudden, um, an additional arrow isn't that worth anymore, and things like crit and crit multi become just that little bit nicer, as well as the uh, 30 life sustain when you actually hit enemies, which uh, should actually be pretty relevant when you attack this insanely fast with Barrage. So it's something to look into and I may play around with that uh, in the end game. And besides that, the passive tree is pretty straightforward. We're still just um, doing the usual, you know, bow thing, ranger thing. Do have a spare dual socket over here. Dual sockets are not a very big deal on a character like this because uh, you can't get super insane um, jewels or properties there's only a few of them out there so a bit of crit multi bit of physical damage bit of projectile damage just attack speed as well see what you can get and the only thing i'll mention about the passive tree is um, to start out leveling i go through these five nodes i grab these two nodes and then go down and i refund them later because i don't think they're strictly worth it in the end but they are very nice to get early on for your damage so i do thoroughly look forward to fleshing this character out in the next few days it's been really fun to play so far and it is really fun to map it's super fast clears really well and uh, has strong single target just make sure that as you're leveling you're keeping your bows up to date with a few um, little uniques so I started out with a storm cloud, went into a doom fletch maybe, and then eventually into a death's opus, but you can use a death's harp before that as well. Should feel really strong all the way through. Uh, pick up your hatred and your herald of ice, get those in as your um, main reservations. But I started out with triple herald and it felt really good, especially with uh, all of the cosmetic herald effects, which are pretty damn cool at the moment. But for now, I'd say that's all I'm going to say. This is Beep Beepin, still a Jeepin, a level 81 Deadeye for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the little wrap-up. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.